again today, and today we'll be reading one of the kind of books that we never ever read. It's The Twit from Roald Dahl, illustrated by Quentin Blake. And so today I just want to go really slow, and so I made so. Uh, this will be Mrs. Twit, and this will be Mr. Twit, and they have really interesting facts, and but they are kind of really disgusting, and I, I really like the story, but like, and I really like how the the characters' personality, and and what they have, but. It's kind of disgusting. So, if you don't really want to read this, you don't actually have to watch this. Okay, I'm just yeah, I'm just practicing my English. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. And this looks like oh, there is a short page of explaining the. The character. Okay, Mr. Twit is an awful, smelly man with bits of cornbread and sardine in his beard. Mrs. Twit is a horrible old hag with a glass eye. Together, they made the nastiest couple you could ever, ever hope not to meet. Down in the garden, the Twits came Mungawamp, the monkey. And the family locked in a cage, but not for much longer, because the monkeys are planning to trick the terrible twit once and for all. Okay, so that will be the short yeah thing to. <gasps> and oh my God, there's nine, there's twenty nine chapters. So. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think I will read seven chapters today, and okay, and like so four videos and one. Okay, it will be four videos. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, like that. But the last video will be eight chapters. So if you want to follow along, please click my videos, and you can find a lot more funny. Things there, but if you don't actually have the books, I put I'll put out some art, and you could follow me along with that too. Okay, chapter one: hairy faces. What well, a lot of hairy faced men are there around nowadays. When a man grows hair all over his face, it is impossible to tell what he really looks like. Perhaps that's why he does it. He rather you didn't know. Then there's the problem of washing. When the very hairy ones wash their faces, it must be a big, a, big a job as when you wash, as when you and I wash the hair on our heads. So what I want to know is this: How often did this hairy-faced man wash wash their faces? Is it is only once in a week, like us on Sunday night. Do they shampoo it? Do they use a hair dryer? Do they rub hair tonic it to stop their faces from going bald? Do they go to the barber to have their hairy face cut it and trimmed, or do they just do it themselves in front of the bathroom mirror with nails? I don't know. The next time you see a hairy faced man, which will probably be. As soon as you step out onto the street, maybe you look at him more closely and start wondering about some of these things. And there's a picture about of some hairy-faced man. Ooh, yeah. And I not I was not supposed to actually tell this, but I don't actually like the pictures of Rose Albert. Yeah. Chapter two, Mister Twit. Mister Twit was one of the very hairy-faced men. The whole of his face, except for his forehead, his eyes, 
and then they were covered with thick hair. The stuff is sprouted and revolting tuck out of his nostrils and ear holes. Mr. Put said that this hairy name made him, made him look terrifically right and grand. But the truth, he was neither of those things. Mr. Twit was a twit. He was born a twit. Now at the age of 60, he was a bigger twit than bef than ever. The hair on Mr. Twit's face did not grow smooth and matty as, as it does on most hairy face men. He grew spikes that stuck out straight like the bristles of a nail brush. And how often did Mr. Twit walk? Put wash his bristly nail brush face of his. The answer is never. Not even on Sundays. He hasn't washed for years. And it takes a picture of Mr. T and oh my gosh, he's so dirty and ugly. Look at his face and his beard. Ugh. I don't, I really do not like man that looks like him. Yeah. Chapter 3. Dirty Beard. As you know, an ordinary unhairy face like yours or mine simply gets a little smudgy if it's not washed often enough and there's nothing so awful about that. But hairy face is a very different matter. Things cling on the hair, especially food. Things like gravy goes right among the hairs and stay there. You and I can wipe off our smooth faces with a panel and we can quickly look more or less all, all right again. But the hairy face man cannot do that. We can also, if we are very careful, eat our meat without spreading food all over our faces. But not so the hairy face. Man, watch carefully next time you see a hairy man eating his lunch. And you notice, even if that he opens his mouth very wide, wide, it is impossible for him. Sorry, my mom was. Yeah. It is impossible for him to get a spoonful of this stew or ice cream or chocolate sauce in it, into it, without losing some of it onto the hairs. Mr. Twit didn't even bother to open his whole mouth wide when he ate. As a result, and because he never washed, there was always hundreds of bits and old breakfast and lunches and supper sticking up, st sticking to the hairs around his face. They weren't big bits, mind you, because he used to wipe those out with the back of his hands or on the sleeve while he was eating. But if you look closely, not that you never ever want to, you see tiny specks of dried or scrambled eggs stuck to the hairs, and spinach, and tomato ketchup, and fish fingers, and this chicken liver, and all the other disgusting things Mr. Twit likes to eat. It's a picture of Mr. Twit eating, and he's wiping off food. And he is so dirty. And uh, on the last photo, um, I actually let the look at the uh, look at it. The person drew the food all over his beard. So it's kind of really detailed. If you look closer, so still hold your noses, ladies and gentlemen. If you peer deep into the mustache versus sticking sticking over his upper lip, you'd probably see a lot larger object that had been that had been that had escaped out of his wipe of his hand. Things that have been there for months and months. Like a piece of magnolia green cheese or a moldy old cornflake or even a the slimy tail of a tin sardine. Because of this, Mr. Twit never went really hungry. By sticking out of his tongue and curling his body to explore the hairy jungle around his mouth, he was always able to find a tasty morsel here.
in there to nibble on. Okay. This is a little too disgusting. Okay. So, I don't actually want to read this anymore. Okay. What I am trying to tell you is that Mr. Twit was a foul and smelly old man. He was also an externally horrid old man, and you found out in a moment. <laughs> it's another picture of you, Mr. Twitch Mouse. And his teeth are yellow. You. It's really on you. Oh. oh, and. Okay. So, for kids. Yeah. Um, because you not probably watch this today, and because, yeah, and it's not actually bragging, but, yeah, if you really, if you are the people who subscribe to me, and you like my videos, it will be probably good and all that. Tomorrow is my birthday, and you can not actually prepare for well, you could like happy write happy birthday or a pic or draw a picture of and just this if you want. Yeah, I'm just telling you that tomorrow is my birthday, March March eighth, and I think it'll be a little yeah. Okay, and okay, I don't have enough that time. Okay, we need to read quick. Chapter 4. Mrs. Twit. Mrs. Twit was, was no better than her husband. She did not, of course, have a hairy face. It was a spitty. She didn't because they was right to uh, have hidden some of her few ugliness. Take a look at her. Ew, look at her. Her face is ew. Ah. Why did I choose to read this? Oh my. Have you ever seen a woman with an uglier face than that? I doubt it. But the funny thing is that Mrs. Twit wasn't born ugly. She had a quite nice face when she was young. The ugliness has grown apart. Her, her, ear by ear and she got older. Why would that happen? I'll tell you why. Look. This is how Mrs. Twit looked like. Ooh, she has a pretty nice face, but a little uglier. A little more uglier. And really ugly. It's just that this is how she goes. And like, most people like need to like straighten up their backs, but they feel the like, like they're going like this, 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 and this. Yeah, and so she has a very good back pose. And she is extremely ugly and extremely hard like her husband. Yep. If a person has an ugly thoughts, he begins to show on the face. And when that person has ugly thoughts, every day, every week, every year, the face gets uglier and uglier. Until it gets so ugly, you can hardly bear to look at it. A person who has good thoughts can never, cannot. Ever be ugly. You can have a wonky nose and a crooked mouth and a double chin and stick out teeth. But if you have good thoughts, they'll shine, shine out your faces like sunbeams and you always look lovely. Nothing shone out of Mrs. Twitch's face. In her right hand, she carried a walking stick. She used to tell people that, because, that she had watch growing on the sole of her left foot and walking was painful. But the real reason why she carried a stick was so she could hit things with it, like dogs and cats and small children. And, and there's a glass eye. Mrs. Twit has a glass eye that's always looking the other way. Chapter 5, The Glass Eye. You can play a lot of tricks with the glass eye, because you can take it off and pop it, pop it back and, and get any time you like. You bet you can bet her like Mrs. Twit knew all the time. One morning, she took out of out her glass eye and dropped it into Mr. Twit's mug of beer when he wasn't looking. Mr. Twit sat there drinking his beer slowly. The first made a red wing 
on the hairs around his mouth. You wipe the frost onto his sleeve and wipe his sleeve on his trousers. They're plucking something. So this is this is what it said. Okay. You're plucking something. This is what it said. Giving keep, keeping her back tuned so she wouldn't see that you took out of her glass eye. And oh in the last chapter there's a picture of a woman with a nice sock. Well she doesn't look that pretty, but yeah, I can put it as nice. And take a look at Mrs. Twist. Like look at how much. Like this is the ball kind of woman and this is the good kind of woman. Yeah. My mom is kind of like that. Yeah. You're plucking something. This is it. I'm keeping her. Okay. Hello. It's on this page. Okay. Whenever you go all quiet like, like that, I know very well that you're plucking something. This is Tut. Well, right. Mr. Tut was closing away like mad. He was trying to think of a really nasty trick. He could play on his white face. You better be careful, Mrs. Twister, because when I see you starting to plot, I watch you like a wombat. Oh, do shut up, you old hag, Mr. Twister said. He went on drinking his feet, and his evil mind kept on walking away on the last horrid trick he was going to play on the old woman. Suddenly, as Mr. Twitch dipped the last drop of beer down his throat, he caught the sight of Mrs. Twitch's awful glass eyes staring at him from the bottom of the mug. It made him jump. I told you I was watching you, cackled Mrs. Twitch. I guess I'm happier, so you better be careful. It's a picture of another Mr. Twitch and his beard and... And this is when he saw this is Twitch awful glass eyes. Okay, yeah. That's kind of what we really were about. Yeah. So we'll stop there for now and we'll begin and we'll continue tomorrow or a little bit later. Okay. Bye bye guys. Have a nice day.